Okay, so now I'm going to go through the CFD exercise. Here was the sheet which you'll have seen. Um, just to really go through the main points. Um, I said it, we just download and run in, in some sense. The important point of this is that um, this is the pitch you'll see. I mean, it's really just there as a calculation and will it analyze its performance, but it is simulating fluid flow in a cavity. There's a water coming in on here, flowing around and going away here, and the arrows show the direction of flow and the color shows the magnet, how fast it is. So it comes out really fast out this jet, flows around and then goes goes fast out here uh, at the bottom. And um, we'll, you'll see that um, we're gonna run this program for a certain number of iterations. If you don't run it for sufficient iterations, you get a funny picture. And you, the picture looks the same to, to regardless of what scale factor you use. So scale factor one is the very small problem, 32 by 32. If you do scale factor of uh, of 32, you get a thousand by a thousand simulation, but the picture always looks the same. But by doing a larger simulation, you're, you're using in, in practice, if you're interested in the results, you would be getting a, a finer grid, a more detailed grid. But on large simulations, if you have a fixed number of iteration counts, that you, it won't be a, um, enough time to get to the correct solution. So you might see something a bit weird like this here. But in fact, in terms of performance, that's fine. So it's very important to note that when you're doing performance studies, you don't necessarily you don't need to run a count often don't need to run a calculation to completion. You can say, well, each iteration is doing the same thing, takes the same amount of time, so we can just measure a fixed number of iterations. But what I wanted you to do initially was basically look to take the system size and work out the number of updated cells per second, where the number of updated cells was um, here for a 128 by 128 system. Um, would you could calculate it this way. 128 to 128 is the number of cells. We might do 5,000 iterations. We divide by the time we get the number of iterations per second. Uh, number of updated cells per second. So how does the number of updated cells change with increasing system size? Can you explain the observed behavior? How do you think it's related to the hardware architecture? So I've got some results here, which I think were actually taken with the Intel compiler, but I expect you get similar results from, from all the other compilers. And I've actually got, we're gonna go on later to look at what happens when you, when you run multiple copies of this of this simulation. Um, but that's the number n. But for here, I'm just interested with n equals one. So look at this top line here. Number of updated cells per second for a small system size is about um, 800 million and goes down and it's it's under half that for a large system size. So the question is, why is that? And the, what this this um, exercise is really try, trying to get through to um, illustrate is that the performance of modern computer systems is really often dominated by, by reading and writing to memory. There's a bottleneck when you read and write to memory. And so when you do a larger system size, the bigger the system size, uh, the, the more data you have to read and the slower the calculation is. And so that, that's, the, and, um, you'll, that's you know, I find a fairly clear um, uh, trend here. Um, but we can actually quantify it, not so much in terms of the, of the number of cells per second, but in terms of these thresholds. So um, if you look up the architecture, you'll see that um, the, I think the, the, the cache sizes on, on, on Archer are the level one cache, which is the very fast cache, is 32 kilobytes, which is so small that we, we can really sort of, uh, it's not really that relevant. Uh, the level two cache is probably the most important one. Remember, each, each CPU core has its own cache. Um, so the level two cache is 256, 256 kilobytes. So we'll try and quantify that. Well, 256 kil kilobytes, each um, element in this calculation is eight bytes. So that's 256 kilobytes means we've got 32,000, about 30, we can store about 32,000 double position numbers in the cache. But we have two arrays here. So that means that uh, we can, we can, for each array uh, can be, can have 16, if each array has 16,000 elements or less, we can fit it into the cache and we expect the, the, um, the uh, calculation to be fast. Uh, 16,000, well, it's a square, so what, how big is 16,000 elements? Well, that turns out to be about um, maybe, you know, um, 16,000, take the square root of 16,000, is the square root of 160 times 10, which is about, you know, 12, something like that. So if we had 128 by 128 simulation, we'd expect that it, it, would, it would fit into the level two cache. And uh, we can see here that, um, that's 32, 64, 128. We see we get good performance when the, when the system size is 120 or later, fitting into level two cache, and then we drop. And so that th this, this drop here, we can predict just by looking at the numbers. Then we hit a plateau, 
and then it drops again and it drops again because this is actually using the level three cache and the level three cache is um, 64, um, 64 megabytes or um, I think it's 64 megabytes and um, we can do the same calculation and you'll see that this threshold here happens at the um, at that drop off as to where the uh, where, where where the cache um, where we run out of cache and then out here we're running out of main memory so the the data isn't fitting into the caches it's out in main memory so we, we have to go and get it each time that's why the performance drops so much so that's really this general form of this curve this is fitting into the this one may fit into the level one cache but basically this fits into level two cache this fits sorry this is the level two cache, this fits into the level three cache, and this doesn't fit into cache at all, and it goes out, um, it goes out to main memory.